In this lecture, we will continue presenting and discussing some definitions related to load characteristics. And at the end, we will summarize this first section about definitions. We will start with the definition of the utilization factor. Then, we will define the load factor. Then the loss diversity. And then the diversity factor. Let's start by defining the utilization factor. The utilization factor, or use factor, is the ratio of the time that a piece of equipment is in use, to the total time that it could be in use, that is called base time. It is often averaged over time in the definition, such that the ratio becomes the amount of energy used, divided by the maximum possible to be used, that is the ratio of maximum demand to rated capacity. Let's see an example of utilization factor calculation. An oversized motor, 15 kilowatts, drives a constant 12 kilowatts load whenever it is on. Motor load factor is then 12 over 15 that equals 80%. This motor, is only used for 8 hours per day, and 50 weeks per year. We want to determine the motor utilization or use factor. To calculate the motor utilization or use factor for a yearly base, we need to first determine the total number of hours in one year, which is, 24 hours per day, times approximately 365 days per year. That is 8,760 hours per year. We know that, the motor may operate only 8 hours per day, during only 50 weeks of the year. So, the total number of hours of motor operation per year, is calculated as 8 hours per day, times 7 days per week, and times 50 weeks in the whole year. That is, 2,800 hours per year of motor operation. So, in this case, the utilization or use factor is 2,800 divided by 8,760, that is 31.96%. This means that, the motor is utilized on an average of only 31.96% of the total base time. Next, we will define the load factor. The load factor is, the ratio of the average demand of any individual customer or group of customers, over a period of time, to the maximum demand during the same period. Its value is always less than 1 because maximum demand is always higher than average demand, since facilities likely never operate at full capacity for the duration of an entire 24-hour day. A high load factor means, power usage is relatively constant. And a low load factor shows that, occasionally a high demand is set. To service that peak, capacity is sitting idle for long periods, thereby imposing higher costs on the system. Electrical rates, are designed so that, Customers with high load factor, are charged less overall, per kilowatt hour. This process, along with others, is called load balancing, or peak shaving. Let's see an example of load factor calculation. In this example, we consider a large commercial building, with a monthly electrical bill, showing the following information. The peak demand, during the billing period, equals 436 kilowatts. The total energy used during the billing period, equals 57,200 kilowatt hour. And the number of days in billing cycle, equals 30 days. We want to calculate the load factor, for this commercial building, during the considered billing month.
To calculate the load factor, we need to determine first the average demand, that is, 57,200 kilowatt hour over 24 hours per day, times 30 days per month, which equals 47.67 kilowatts, which equals 47.67 kilowatts. Therefore, the load factor is determined, as the ratio of the average demand of 47.67 kilowatts, divided by the maximum demand of 436 kilowatts, times 100 percent. That equals 18.22 percent. As you can notice, this is a low load factor, which indicates that the maximum demand occurs only occasionally. The load factor, is closely related to, and often confused with, the demand factor. The load factor is calculated as, the ratio of the average load, over, the maximum load in a given time of period. While the demand factor is, the ratio of the maximum load in a given time period, over, the maximum possible load. The major difference to note is, that the denominator in the demand factor, is fixed depending on the system. Because of this, the demand factor cannot be derived from the load profile or curve, but needs the addition of the full loads of the system in question. Now, let's define the load diversity. It is the difference between maximum non-coincident demand, and the maximum diversified demand. In other words, it is the difference between the sum of the peaks of individual loads, and the peak of the total combined load. Therefore, the load diversity is given by this equation, where n is the number of connected loads, di is the individual peak demand of each connected load, and dg is the peak of combined load. Note that, the load diversity is not a factor, but is usually expressed in kilowatts, kilovolt amperes, or amperes. Next, we will define the diversity factor. It is the ratio of the maximum non-coincident demand, to the maximum diversified demand. For instance, we consider two facilities with the same maximum demand, but that occur at different intervals of time. When supplied by the same feeder, the demand on the feeder is less than, the sum of the two demands. In electrical design, this condition is known as, diversity. Diversity factors, have been developed for main feeders supplying a number of loads, and typically, they are 1.1 to 1.5 for purely lighting loads, and 1.5 to 2 for combined power and lighting loads. The determination of the diversity factor or coincidence factor is the responsibility of the designer, since it requires a detailed knowledge of the installation, and the conditions in which the individual circuits are to be exploited. The determination of the diversity factor is the responsibility of the designer, since it requires a detailed knowledge of the installation, and the conditions in which the individual circuits are to be exploited. This table, gives some examples of diversity factors according to the IEC standard. The diversity factors depend on the class of load being residential, commercial, general power or large industrial loads. It depends also on, the location where it is calculated. For instance, the diversity factor between individual users, is 2 for residential class, 1.46 for commercial load, and 1.45 for general power load. Also, the diversity factors from users to transformers are lower than those from users to feeders, and those from users to substation, and those from users to generating station. Note that the more upstream you go, the higher the diversity factors. Note also, that the residential load has the highest diversity factor. Industrial loads have low diversity factors, usually of 1.4, street light practically unity, 
and other loads vary between these limits. As an example, this graph illustrates different load curves for industrial and residential loads, which exhibit different peak loads at different times. The combined total system peak load, seen from the distribution substation or generating station, exhibits a different shape and peak load at different time also. The diversity factor is calculated using this equation, which is actually the ratio of the sum of the industrial and residential peaks to the total system load peak. In summary, the diversity factor is calculated as the ratio of the sum of individual maximum demands, to the coincident maximum demand, as shown in this equation. Where, DI is the maximum demand of load I, disregarding time of occurrence, and DG is the coincident maximum demand of group of loads. We have seen previously, that the demand factor of any load I, is the ratio of the maximum load I in a given time period, to the maximum possible load I. This leads to writing, the maximum load I in a given time period, equals, maximum possible load I, times, the load I demand factor, or TCDI times DFI, where, TCDI is the total connected demand of group or class I load and DFI is the demand factor of group or class I load. Hence, we can express the diversity factor, as a function of the demand factor, as shown in this equation. Now, let's practice on how we can make use of the diversity factor, through the following example. In this example, we want to calculate the size of a main feeder from substation switch gear, that is supplying 5 feeders with connected loads of, 400, 350, 300, 250 and 200 kV amperes, with demand factors of, 95, 90, 85, 80 and 75 percent, respectively. We are asked to use a diversity factor of 1.5. To solve such a problem, we start by calculating the demand for each feeder, making use of the feeder's connected loads, and their corresponding demand factors. Then, we calculate the total sum which is, in this case, equal to 1300 kV amperes. If the feeders were sized at unity diversity factor, then, we should size the feeder for an equivalent total demand of 1300 kVA divided by 1 equals 1300 kVA. However, using the diversity factor of 1.5, the total kVA demand equals 1300 kVA divided by 1 1.5, equals 866 kVA for the feeder. Transformer supplying the main feeder, plus wiring methods, and equipment, can be sized from this lower kilovolt ampere rating. Hence, it is clear that, using the appropriate diversity factor, allows significant cost saving, when designing distribution systems. Now, let's practice on how we can make use of the diversity factor, through the following example. In this example, we want to calculate the size of a main feeder from substation switch gear, that is supplying 5 feeders with connected loads of, 400, 350, 300, 250 and 200 kV amperes, with demand factors of, 95, 90, 85, 80 and 75 percent, respectively. We are asked to use a diversity factor of 1.5. Then, we calculate the total sum which is, in this case, equal to 1300 kV amperes. 
if the feeders were sized at unity diversity factor, then, we should size the feeder for an equivalent total demand of 1300 kVA divided by 1 equals 1300 kVA. However, using the diversity factor of 1.5, the total kVA demand, equals 1300 kVA divided by 1 1.5, that is 866 kVA. This value is used for sizing the main feeder supplying the switch gear. Transformer supplying the main feeder, plus wiring methods, and protection equipment, can be also sized from this lower kilovolt ampere rating. Hence, it is clear that, using the appropriate diversity factor, allows significant cost saving, when designing distribution systems. Let's consider a second example. In this example, there are six residential customers connected to a distribution transformer, as shown in this figure. Assume that, the connected load is 9 kilowatts per house, and that the demand factor, and diversity factor, for the group of six houses, have been decided as 0.65 and 1.1, respectively. We want to determine the diversified demand of the group of six houses on the distribution transformer DT427. We know that the diversified demand DG can be calculated using this equation. We know also that, for each house, the total connected load is 9 kilowatts. Calculating the sum for the six houses total connected loads, and multiplying by the demand factor, and then dividing by the diversity factor, yields a diversified demand DG equals 31.9 kilowatts. To conclude this lecture, we can note that the diversity factor changes according to social standard, number of customers, equipments used, etc. The greater value the better. As illustrated by this graph, the larger the number of customers the higher the diversity factor. However, this relation is not linear but rather saturates starting from a certain number of customers. Now, you can practice on the following exercise. This will be a good practice for you, which enables you to check if, you have understood the meaning of the diversity factors, and how it can be used, to size the equipment in a distribution system. In this exercise, we consider a 5 stories apartment building with 25 consumers, each having 6 kVA of installed load, as shown in this figure. Given the diversity factors, as function of number of consumers, as shown in this table, you are asked to determine, the apparent power supply, that is required for the whole building. Then, if we consider that the feeders are, 3 phase 400 volts line voltage, you are asked to determine the magnitude of currents in different sections of the common main feeder, supplying each floor. For that you can consider that, conductor size changes, are conventionally spaced by, at least three floor intervals. The final answers are, 69.12 kVA for the apparent power supply required for the building, and 99.8 amps do the main feeder going up to the second floor, and 54.5 amps, for the feeder supplying the third and fourth floors. This is the end of this lecture. Hope that it was clear and informative. Thank you for watching.